Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in our readings today, Jesus teaches his disciples how to become authentic servants. May we learn from the heart of Jesus who came to serve and not to be served. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this, I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all, the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all that what is planned of the mystery. Hidden from the ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. To this, according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our God, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim His name. Among the nations, make known His deeds. Proclaim how exalted is His name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for His glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Please stand. Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. 
you also must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today speak of Jesus teaching his disciples how to become good servants. Paano nga ba maging mabuting lingkod? Siguro po kapag tinanong ko kayo, paano nga ba maging mabuting lingkod? How can I serve well? Perhaps the first answer that you will uh, say to me is, I should have the proper skill. Kailangan marami akong alam gawin. Kailangan marami akong magawa. A good servant should have the proper skills. A good servant should do many things for his master. Kaya nga halimbawa, kapag pipili kayo ng magiging katiwala ninyo, pipili kayo ng mga empleyado ninyo, siguro ang pipiliin ninyo yung maraming alam gawin, yung effective sa kanyang ginagawa. But Jesus reminds us today in the Gospel reading that to become a good servant is not about your skill, but it is about knowing God's will, knowing the Master's will. Sabi ni Jesus, para maging mabuting lingkod ka, hindi lang ibig sabihin ay kumikilos ka. Ang mabuting lingkod ay nakikinig sa kanyang guro. The root of servanthood is not your skill, but knowing the Master's will. That is why in our Gospel reading today, in His parable, Jesus said that the Master will punish those who know His will 
but do not act according to that will or the servants who do not know the master's will. Kinakailangan, sabi ni Jesus, kung gusto mong maging mabuting lingkod, una, makinig ka muna sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Kaya po, halimbawa sa tahanan, kung maglilingkod ka sa tahanan, hindi pwedeng kilos ka lang ng kilos, makinig ka naman. Siguro ko merong mga mag-asawa dito, baka sinasabi niyo palagi, binibigay ko naman lahat sa iyo. Yan ang paglilingkod ko. Baka sinasabi ng mga magulang sa mga anak, binibigay ko lahat sa inyo, nagtatrabaho ako maghapon, yan ang paglilingkod ko sa inyo. At teka lang, hindi lang yan ang paglilingkod. Nakikinig ka rin ba sa asawa mo? Tinanong mo na ba siya minsan, ano ba talagang gusto mo? Ano ba ang nais mo? Nakinig ka na ba sa anak mo? Parte ng paglilingkod ang pakikinig. At ang mabuting lingkod ay mabuti rin at marunong makinig. That is why in our first reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, St. Paul describes himself as the steward of God's grace. The steward of God's plan. The steward of God's purpose. And he teaches other people to act according to God's purpose, according to God's will, according to God's plan. That is the stewardship of St. Paul. Ang paglilingkod ni San Pablo ay ang sundin at alamin ang kalooban ng Panginoon. A good servant knows the will of the Master. And that is the root, that is the foundation of our servanthood. Mga minamahal na kapatid, kung nais po nating maging mabuting lingkod, wag lang alamin ano ang kaya kong gawin. Tanungin mo rin, marunong nga ba akong makinig? Yan ang mabuting lingkod. Let us pray that in this Mass, we may learn how to listen to our Master's will. Amen. Please stand. We place our faith in God the Father as we present before Him the needs and concerns of our lives. For every petition, let us say, Sustain us in your service, O Lord. Sustain us in your service, O Lord that the Church may always show deep faith in God who guides world events. Let us pray to the Lord. Sustain, Sustain us in, in your service, service, O Lord. That government leaders and workers may be honest in their work and that they may always be ready to give an account of their work, not only before the people, but before God. Let us pray to the Lord. Sustain us in your service, O Lord. That young people may be assiduous in their work and studies and keep on hoping for a better world. Let us pray to the Lord. Sustain us in your service, O Lord. That the dying may look to Christ with hope and penitent trust. Let us pray to the Lord. Sustain us in your service, O Lord that the faithful departed may enjoy forever the fullness of God's saving power. Let us pray to the Lord. Sustain us in your service, O Lord. 
Lord, in your wisdom, you know the hour and the day. Do not let our cares close our hearts to your coming. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy, we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my, my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age, 
and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to acknowledge the members of the Tagapagtaguyod ng Sining at Kultura ng Pilipinas. They joined us in this celebration online as they hold their fourth Philippine Arts Summit from October 19 to 21. And we also congratulate their new members so that they could develop and promote Philippine arts and culture to educate Filipinos and non-Filipinos alike about Philippine arts and culture. We also invite everyone tonight for our Healing Rosary for the World, and we will be hosted by the Diocesan Shrine and Parish of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary in Cardona, Rizal, and we will be praying in front of the canonically crowned image of La Virgen de Sapao. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.